What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I was pondering a few days ago about the decision behind James Gunn wanting to uh, give us a character whose humor is punk rock for the Supergirl character. And I pondered and pondered, and I figured out perhaps the reasoning behind that. You, in in the story, Woman Woman of Tomorrow, uh, Supergirl is not a happy camper. No, kind of war-weary. Yes. Yeah, a little bit given up on the role and and down on sort of the the idea of heroism. Yeah. I believe the punk rock's humorous thing is a facade Ah, that she she uses to hide that part of her personality or character or who she is. Okay. I think that, hence, that's why it could work if she's just what's this dude's name adam warlock just, he's just oh you mean dead. from you mean from guardians adam yes warlock. yeah if he's you know if he's just funny and he's just you know what i'm saying there's no re he's just who he is then we have a problem if she's a yeah. punk rock humorous person and that's who she is and we don't see any hints of that part of her then this character is just a vehicle for whatever he wants to do. WB is reportedly screen testing. Um, Millie Alcock, you could argue maybe she's the best known. She was she just appeared um, on House of the Dragon as one of the younger leads of that show. And Meg Donnelly, I believe the oldest is 22. So you're definitely getting a, a young, but I guess worn out Kara um, as, as part of this. But they're definitely, I mean, this would definitely be someone who could play the part for a long time if it was successful. So, um, and and you're right, you're kind of, we're getting the, the, the punk rock and the humor part is very gun, but the, the nature of the story they're using for the basis of this character is Tom King, who obviously is in the room, is in the writer's room, literally. Is a, he's literally kind of a consultant on all these shows. It's interesting. One of the things we learned from the reign of MCU book that I think Gunn is borrowing from in his approach was this idea that whatever the names were on the projects, there were always a couple of extra hands behind the scenes who were working on almost every film. So Gunn himself became one of them. Like after he did Guardians 1, he clearly was in the room and had some voice on almost every project that went on until the time when he left uh, or was fired, brought back, whatever you want to call it. You know what that means, Brian? It just kind of feels like he's using Tom King as one of those Those. people in this universe. His uh, uh, mastermind group. Yeah, his version of the parliament. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And what you know what that means, right? Is that it is an open spot over there at the parliament at the MCU. (laughs) That's what that means. (laughs) The book made clear it was basically Gunn and Joss Whedon until Joss had his sort of, you know, problems elsewhere. But those were the two people who kind of, they weren't quite Kevin Feige, but they had Kevin Feige's ear. And Kevin Feige would go to them for input on almost every film that was happening. Clearly that worked. I mean, that clearly was helpful and beneficial at points to these various projects. And Gunn appears to be, you know, using, as he calls it, a writer driven approach. But he's got these couple of people who he trusts that are going to be sort of the, the angels on his shoulder to kind of maybe. And hopefully that helps safeguard us against some of Gunn's, you know, tendencies that we don't like as much so we'll see but it can't hurt that you have the creator of the actual supergirl story you're trying to tell sitting right there i mean just as another example like we don't talk about percy jackson because it's it's a little too far afield for us but like the disney show has been very effective i think as someone who's read the books and whose whose daughter loves the books because rick reardon is basically in the room shepherding the show so the show is very faithful even as they edit out parts of the book it is very true to the spirit of what he was writing. And I, I, I kind of kept thinking about Tom King in the same capacity watching as I'm watching that show. That is called being logical. Hmm? Making a logical decision and bringing in the right people who are familiar with the character <clears throat> and are going to directly affect what we see on screen and how they're supposed to be portrayed. And I just see that as a good thing. 
So um, hopefully, Brian, that is the case. Any 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 other updates? Well, I was going to segue this into the Superman Legacy discussion because we know okay. that Kara supposedly is making her cameo debut of some kind in that movie. But we finally got comments from Rachel Brosnahan about playing Lois Lane, uh huh, which she then expanded <laughs> to talk about the movie finally a little bit. And so I wanted to get your reaction to that. So we obviously had an exchange about someone asked her about Lois, and she said, you know, she described Lois as sort of was, was like you know marvelous, fiercely intelligent. That's sort of, I, I mean, stuff that you would hope Lois would be. Like I, I mean, that's how I think of Lois. I mean, Lois is a crack reporter. And she does have a sense of humor um, and a lot of fire. And that's part of what makes her an endearing character. But Brosnahan went on to talk about the project as a whole and some of the words and phrases she used where she said, everyone associated with this project is the perfect nerd. That was her quote. And she said, and I think this Superman is going to have a sense of humor. How much does that concern you? Are you, I mean, we know it has to be lighter than Man of Steel. But we also know what James Gunn humor cuts both ways. So what's your reaction to her kind of leading with, I think this Superman's going to have a sense of humor as sort of her tagline for what sets it apart? Bad vibrations? Yeah, it's a little ner- It's a little anxiety, right? But I'm quoting Christopher Reeve as Superman. There was humor in there, right? Mm-hmm. And it worked. Uh... And it worked a lot, especially the first time when Superman was going after dudes and he was like, you know, making one off comments and stuff like that. It's it's there. Is James Gunn going to probably go a little bit overboard? How much so? I don't know. But I'm fine with it, Brian, because it'll be an opposite to what whatever this guy did, you know, and, I, and I'm cool with that. I tend to think... So much of this movie ultimately rides on the on the chemistry between the leads, right? That's the part we can't see, right? We can see the photos of David Cornsweet looking out, working out. He looks great. I think Rachel Brosnahan looks as Lois Lane as any Lois Lane actress we've ever had. But it's them together, right? You can talk about how it's how Gunn writes them together, how they act together, and then as we talk about Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, it's how they interact with him. If those three actors can light up the screen. The tone probably will work no matter what it is. We off to the races. We off. Sasloff is 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 doing cartwheels because he know he can probably still ask for that hundred billion dollars <laughs> if it comes down to it. But that's the game, Brian. Building that value, proving that this is how much is worth. Mm-hmm. So, and they haven't been able to prove it, but now they have the opportunity. It all lies with James Gunn. He's holding the key to (laughs) the kingdom of the DC world. So, uh, he realizes what's at stake. Because I never, I never felt like Cavill and Adams. It was forced. They didn't have a spark. It was forced. Like both talented performers but together it was not one plus one equals three i mean listen i get it that if you see someone like superman you're gonna be in awe of him and most people would just be like in awe of him right i guess there you didn't see the, the the immense chemistry there between them brian but i just feel like they they forced that relationship you know how many times did he save her man it was just it's, I just got tired of seeing him save her, and everybody else was left to to rot. I I, I just I, I it just didn't translate well for me. And like I think he, the, yeah. he he sacrificed everything for her, but not for no, you know. I mean, certainly he did some heroic things, but to me that wasn't it. Just wasn't Superman for me. And I think that the way the characters were written in that iteration, to me. Amy Adams was a little too nurturing given how brooding he was, right? The low, again, part of what I love about the animated version in particular, that Lois gives it to Superman. She gives him crap. You know who she is? Uh, She is um, Adrian. Yes. Or Adrian at her best. Yes. Not her. Like like Rocky Rocky 3. 
Yeah, not, exactly. Rocky three, Adrian, not nagging, yes, yes, not yes, nagging, yes, yes, Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Rocky three, Adrian. Rocky, yeah, not yeah. Rocky four, Adrian. Rocky three, Adrian. <laughs> you can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that's the that part of that dynamic is that Lois, despite obviously being mortal, and Superman could crush her in an in, like yeah. she is unafraid to call him out. out. Yes. And like Amy Adams was like watching Superman break snap necks and cause trillions in, in insured damage. <laughs> and she's just like, here, let me hold you instantly. Like that's, <laughs> that doesn't quite work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did also enjoy, before we move on, I, I enjoyed the Lois Lane performance in the Superman All-Stars, the movie. Uh, yeah, no. Some somebody again. The animated world has given us the best version of. You could pick, take your pick, whether Versions. it's the animated yes, series, yes, 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 or yes. movies, or Justice League. Like that's where you see Superman and Lois. The chemistry actually even better in some ways than Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder. If I'm yes. being quite honest, it's just amazing to me how you would deviate from that. I agree, but I think it underscores how hard it is to find in two live action actors. Like in some ways it's proven easier to do with voices and how they've written it. Like that's what I'm saying. Like if these two can hit that, that will carry a lot of other potential flaws with this movie. And if Nicholas Holt on top of that has chemistry with Brosnahan and has different chemistry with Corin Sweat, this movie won't be bad. Like yeah. who knows how epic it'll be, but if those three together work, this movie will not be bad. The floor is incredibly high. I would also be interested in the how Lex treats Kent if he if they're in the same room. That would oh, be interesting. You, speaking of, did you see I gotta I gotta give Jesse Eisenberg one shout. Did you see his comment to Nicholas Holt about playing Lex Luthor? Nah. Someone asked him about it. He just had one word in one sentence. He said, Don't watch me. <laughs> I got to give it to him for that. <laughs> You're back in my good graces. <laughs> Word up, man. Even him, yo. So stop it, yo. Stop it. For all you out there, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Anyway, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of the developments of uh, Supergirl and what the motivations are perhaps for the character being humorous and punk rockish. Uh, what Brosnahan has said regarding her character and the people around um, developing this movie. Uh, I think is in good hands, Brian. I, I continue to have faith in this, this project and um, I've had my concerns, but the more I think about it, I think we're, we're in for a hell of a movie. Now, James Gunn was asked about trailer. I think he's pulling a little bit of a bait and switch on the fan base. He said no trailer, no no actual trailer in 2024. But I think with James Gunn, you always have to be careful with the language. I think he's making sure to downplay expectations for Comic-Con. I still think there will be some kind of sizzle reel or teaser there. He's just not calling it a trailer in the two and a half minute traditional sense of the word. Good. But I would be shocked if you don't see footage that is done and edited in 2024. I cannot wait for that. That and man, I know Jim James Gunn and I would probably have a good time talking about stuff like this, but he's doing it the right way, Brian. Not giving people any expectation whatsoever. Oh, I heard this. No, it ain't happening. Even if it does happen. Yeah. The thing is that we're not going in expecting. And that's what I enjoy about this ride towards that movie. I really hope that he does a really good job of running a tight set. I, I'm, I, I have stopped. I will not click on a Deadpool 3 link ever again until this movie comes out. Because yeah, there are yeah. set picks and leaks of the cop. I don't want to see it. It's yeah. After we saw the beach scene, that was it. I don't want to see any more. I just hope, like, when we get some, when they start shooting this movie, I think it's in March, Superman Legacy is going in front of the camera. I hope that they 
prevent leaks of the costume and leaks yeah. of some of the scenes because yeah. I just don't want any of that spoiled uh, before we can yeah. see actual yeah, yeah. footage. Yeah, me too, man. But yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes.